Hi guys, Brown here, and welcome to a new series on my channel that I'm going to be call calling Let's Talk GP. Basically, I'm just in this series, I'm just going to review what the last Grand Prix was. This is something I was going to start a long while ago, but I just haven't for some reason. It's just kind of things I've been putting off and putting off. But after that absolute classic Brazilian Grand Prix we just had, I think it's pretty rude not to review it. So I'm recording this on the Tuesday after the Grand Prix and I still have no idea what happened in that race. Just, and um, I saw some people saying that it had more action than Germany. I still think Germany best race of the season so far. I think Brazil is up there, I'd probably put Brazil second. Let's go start off by looking at the the finishing order of that race. Anyway, this is the result of the Grand Prix, so obviously Max Verstappen won for Red Bull. A great drive from him, we'll speak more on that in a minute. Pierre Gasly getting his first podium. Obviously, of course, drama happened at the end which led to that Carlos Sainz being promoted to P3 after Hamilton's penalty we'll get onto that as well Kimi Raikkonen finishing 4th which I think don't quote me on this m must be his best result at Alpha and his best result since he left Ferrari last season I think don't quote me on that Giovinazzi was 5th Ricardo 6th after a pretty ev eventful race mm. He had um, Hamilton 7th, we'll get on to that. Lando Norris 8th, Perez 9th, Kvyat 10th, round out the top 10. Kevin Magnussen 11th, George Russell just missing out on a point in 12th. Groge on 13th, Albon 14th, we'll get on to that. Hulkenberg 15th, Kibitza 16th, and then the DNFs. Sebastian Vettel, Charles Leclerc, Lance Stroll, and Valtteri Bottas. Let's start at the beginning then of this race, if we can. The top three were obviously Verstappen, Vettel, Hamilton, and then it was Valtteri Bottas P4 after Charles Leclerc's engine penalty. Um, of course, that was a 10th place, and I think it was Albon 5th as well. So the lights went out, Verstappen absolutely bolted Vettel kind of got a better start-ish, the initial phase of the start, than Max Verstappen, but Verstappen just had it in the second phase. <gasps> Hamilton does a worldy move round the outside of Vettel at the start, and that was pretty much that. Vettel tried to come back at Hamilton, because I'm, I'm a Hamilton fan, so I was absolutely kind of shouting at the telly, making Vettel <laughs> stay behind Hamilton, defended him off, which was good at the end. Charles Leclerc made up some positions on the opening lap, got past Ricardo, and it got past Lando Norris as well. Nearly came together with Lando Norris going into what I'm just going to call Glock Corner. And I've seen a lot of people call it Glock Corner. A um, bit weird. I think Charles went to have a look at whoever was in front of him. I think it was Grosjean or something at the time. But then Norris was still on his inside, and then they kind of had a drag race up towards turn one. And then that was pretty much it for a couple of laps um, the field started to spread Charles was doing his moves through the field um, and then I think we were actually riding on board with the time in the actual race Ricardo and Magnussen and Ricardo goes for the lunge on Magnussen clips his rear tyre, locks up sends Magnussen spinning round and then Ricardo got a 5 second penalty for it which at first, you know, I thought, you know what, Magnussen, you could have given him more room, but then when I looked back on it again, I think you've got to put some blame at Ricardo's door as well. He did go in, lock, locked up, and then that was pretty much game over for him. But he did come back to P6, so he had a great race. Um, Magnussen just missing out on a point, and it was a bit of a mixed weekend for Haas, of course. They both qualified inside the top 10, I believe. Grosjean had engine issues. I think that was something Crofty said in the race. Um, but Magnussen, yeah, obviously got punted by Ricardo. But then it came to around lap 20 mark, I want to say. And then we see Hamilton come to the pits and go on to another set of the softs, I think it was. 
and then Hamilton was like, don't miss this shot. And they didn't, they actually beat, obviously Verstappen pitted the lap later, they beat Verstappen out. Williams doing some dodgy stuff in the pit stops with Kibitza. Kibitza just blatantly didn't see Verstappen, did he? He just came out. I mean, I know, yeah, you can't really see a lot when in the car, especially from the pit result, but he just kept coming, didn't he? And I don't know. I feel like the lo the lollipop man needs to be brought back because I feel like we'd see less of this in the stops. I mean, never saw things like this. Very occasionally we saw things like this, but this is not on every single race weekend we see something like this. So that I think needs to be sorted. Obviously, health and safety issues in this day and age. They'll probably get to a point where they just completely ban pit stops or something. Never know what, how the world works these days. Um, and then, of course, Hamilton was right on the back of Charles Leclerc. Couldn't get past him, got past him eventually. But by the time he had, Verstappen kind of followed him through and was right behind him. Went round the outside, Verstappen, great move. And then a lap later, <laughs> Crofty, what were you doing? I mean, it shows you how much I was paying attention. I actually thought it was Verstappen as well. If you watch Sky coverage, you'll know what I'm on about. Because literally for a good a good 20, sec, 20, 30 seconds, where he was absolutely shouting that Hamilton had just gone back round the outside of Verstappen, when the whole time it was actually Albon, and it wasn't until um, Hamilton actually got the move done, and then... Uh, Martin Brundle went, that's um, Alban, isn't it? And then we came in as that awkward moment, which it was going to come at some point. Um, and then, yeah, nothing really happened for a couple of laps. It was a bit of an up and down race of slow burner, as we like to call it. And then we had it, didn't we? Factory Bottas all over the back of Leclerc. I thought something's going to happen in a minute. There's going to be a crash. We didn't get the crash. Bottas retires in a fairly safe place. But the, the FAA thought it wasn't. And then brought out the full safety car. And boy, are we happy that they did that. Because imagine how this race would have turned out if they'd just thrown out the VSC. Or not even thrown out anything. It would have been boring. Um, then they throw out the safety car. See the field gets bunched up. Mercedes. I still don't understand what they were doing. They were saying to Hamilton. Box opposite to Verstappen. So of course Verstappen pitted. And Hamilton stayed out. I was I was thinking. What are you doing Mercedes? There's obviously. Yeah track, but track position. It's, it's a safety car. Literally. You could have re-overtake him. You could have tried to re-overtake him into turn one. There was literally no point Hamilton staying out. He just he, he just wounded himself against a Verstappen who pitted for a free set, basically a free pit stop. So I don't see the point of that. They could have pitted Hamilton as well, and Hamilton would have been the one up right up behind Verstappen trying to get past into turn one and would we have done it who knows but i think that would have been the only logical way and then of course we had the ferraris charles leclerc absolutely sends it up the inside of sebastian vettel gets the job done and a vettel headed down towards turn four pulls back out to, to the outside pretty much back past leclerc and then just and then just starts coming over and Charles isn't moving and of course there's a contact and it was I think it was very minor contact but of course the speeds they're going I think they're going it must be close to 200 mile an hour heading down into turn four of course the tire goes flying off and we see boiling point at Ferrari do I think anything will change for Abu Dhabi probably not it's Ferrari um I just think they can't come together again. Um, looking back on it, you might want to know my point. I think it's Vettel. You, he comes over to Leclerc. I'm not being funny. It's Mark Webber in Turkey style. Like, you chill out, Seb. He's, he's your teammate. You can't be that aggressive to your teammate. Because at the end of the day, if you wipe him out 
A, is your teammate, B, you've got some massive explaining to do, and not only to the press, it's to the whole team. And of course, Vettel retired as well. Vettel blaming Leclerc, which is obviously going to do. Leclerc blaming Vettel, which obviously he's going to do. I think it was Vettel's fault. Um, but... I don't know, I just think it's one of them. So the second safety car came out. Um, Mercedes decided to pit Hamilton for some strange reason. I still don't really understand why they did that. Ultimately, it probably cost them in the race, I think. Obviously, but at the time, we saw Hamilton come into the pits. And we didn't actually think there would be enough laps left for the race to even get restarted. But fortunately it did, and then what unfolded after that of course, so the safety car came in, Verstappen was weaving, wait, pretty much went right up to the line before he floored it, so it was it was Verstappen by Albon, by P. Gasly, then it was Hamilton, Hamilton straight away just went right round the outside of Gasly like it wasn't even there, of course that Mercedes is a lot more powerful than the Toro Rosso it seemed at the time because we'll get onto what happened in just a second and then um, Verstappen absolutely bolted and then Hamilton on lap 70 I think it was Albon goes wide Hamilton sees the door open goes for it Albon it shuts the door and that's it Albon's round Pete Gasly then re-overtakes Hamilton Albon gets spun down to P15 which I feel I like Albon but I don't know I think of course Hamilton got the penalty in the end 5 second time penalty which put him on the way down in 7th one of the things we can take from this is that we finally got consistency in the FIA because if you look at the Albin Hamilton incident and you look at the Ricardo Magnussen incident earlier on in the Grand Prix, there's literally no different apart from the corner, obviously. And so I think in that way, the FIA had to be consistent in that way. I personally think Albin's probably to blame a little bit. I don't think it's 100% at Hamilton's door. I think... Hamilton went through a gap that was there. I think I know if I'd been in Hamilton's situation, I would have gone for the gap. But then Albon shuts the door, and of course he comes to cut back out. I think I think Albon could have left more space, but then ultimately Hamilton shouldn't have gone for the risky move. But I don't really think it was that risky. I know he, as soon as he got out the car, he said it was his fault, but I don't know. I don't really think it was. Um, and of course the FAA also gave them two penalty points on his licence which I think was a bit harsh I think the um, the five second penalty was probably enough obviously it did enough damage it, it meant he went from getting 15 points all the way down to literally getting six so I think that's enough damage in itself of course he doesn't really care though let's be honest he's just wrapped up the championship but points still kind of matter for those lower teams as well in the midfield and those fighting for third in the championship as well. And then on the final lap, of course, we had Hamilton all over the back of Pierre Gasly trying to get past him for second place. And then it got to Glock Corner. Hamilton goes for it down the inside. And then we have the drag race up from that final corner, that final proper corner, let's be honest, all the way up to the line, and I think by, I think I, I saw a thing on the F1 website, and it was literally 0 0.0064, Gasly finished in second, ahead of Hamilton, and I think his front wing was probably to kind of blame for that Hamilton, of course he had damage after the Albon incident, I think, had he not had that damage with Albon, I think he could have gone that little that little bit further. We could have ended up, you never know, with literally they finished 0 
but we also had, of course, the amazing team radio from Peer Gasly. Um, if you can actually understand what it's saying, then that's off to you. But it's amazing to see. I, I like seeing when the smaller teams that don't, you don't really expect to see on the podium. I think it's just a breath of fresh air, to be honest. And it's it's odd seeing them there, but it's really, really good at the same time. Because it just kind of throws back to no matter how quick and how further ahead the top three teams are if they mess it up and like in Brazil like also in Germany those smaller teams are there to pounce and pick up some very very big points I mean I think that promotes Gasly to pretty solid P4 I think in the standings because that, that kind of start of season with Red Bull is pretty much cemented where he will be probably finished now um, but that is Toro Rosso's second podium of the year of course Kvyat in Germany in that hectic race in that hectic race in that hectic race as well technically it was a Red Bull 1-2 and also, it was a Honda 1-2, which I believe, I can't remember the exact year, was a stat since Ayrton Senna last won. So Kimi fourth, that was good. Antonio Giovinazzi, so it's a great finish from Alpha. Um, that's, kind, that's kind of been my thoughts on the Brazilian Grand Prix. If you like these kind of videos, you want me to do more, if you want me to do it for Abu Dhabi, if you want me to start pretty much from scratch. Uh, Australia, when 2020 kicks off. And let me know in the comments below and I will see you in the next one.